What is up guys, in this video we're going to be going over how we can create this messenger style chatbot using HTML, CSS and JavaScript and it can do a lot of things such as play rock paper scissors, if you ask it how can I learn to code, it's going to give you some other responses and actually I have to specify that our bot will not be so advanced to actually respond to such messages. Ours is going to be a bit more basic, just so you can get through how to create it and you can add your own responses. I'm gonna show you everything though. And as you can see, if we say hello, and we can also click on this button over here to send the message, it's gonna say hello there. If you say goodbye, it's gonna say goodbye, talk to you later. You can click on the heart, it's gonna say heart clicked. And it also has a very smooth scrolling animation or collapsing animation. And if we resize the window to mobile mode, you'll notice it will fit the entire screen in case the users are on a mobile phone. And you can still say hello and you can still write things. If it doesn't know what you're saying, it will tell you to try asking something else. But once again, I will teach you everything about this messenger chatbot and how you can add your own commands. The one from my personal site is a bit different because I actually use Python in the back end. And maybe in the near future, I'll also teach you how to do that. But for now, we are just going to concentrate on creating the UI and adding some very basic responses. And I also included the link to the source code in the description down below. It's going to take you to this Gumroad page. It's gonna ask you to name a fair price, but if you don't want to pay anything, of course, you can just enter zero. And it's going to provide you with a zip folder with all of the necessary files for this messenger style chatbot. So just in case you get stuck at any point, just go to this web page and you'll be able to get the source code. But the first thing we have to do is go ahead and create a new folder in our desktop. I'm just gonna call this MSC bot, which just stands for messenger chatbot. And then you need to go ahead and open Visual Studio Code. Then a very simple way to start a project is to drag a folder inside Visual Studio. And as you can see now we have a small folder space and inside here we can start by typing index.html. And we're going to start with the placeholder of HTML5 as always, because it's very simple. And we can just name this chatbot for the title. And then we need to go ahead and provide a few links. So the first link is going to be a style sheet, which is going to refer to a folder called static slash CSS slash chat dot CSS. And maybe it's actually better to go ahead and create all the folders and files before we refer to them. So let's go ahead and do that actually. And we're gonna go ahead and type in first the chat dot CSS. Then we're gonna go ahead and create another file called home dot CSS. Then we also want to go ahead and type in chat dot JS. And one more is gonna be the responses dot js. Then we can create some folders to clean this up and we're going to type in static as the first folder and inside there we have to drag the chat. We're not going to ask this again. Move the home and then we need to move the response and the chat JavaScript inside there. Then inside here we can create another folder which is going to be called CSS. And of course we will drag the CSS inside there and one more folder which is going to be called scripts and these two scripts will go inside the scripts folder. And I absolutely hate when it does this, but scripts should be in the static as well. Anyway, in the end, you should have something looking like this, where you have a static folder, a CSS folder, a scripts folder, and an index. But now we can go back to our index and actually refer to things that exist, such as link, CSS, and for this one, we can go ahead and type in static slash CSS, and now it helps us out so we can actually make sure we type in the right things that exist. I'm also going to include another link to a file on GitHub, which will allow you to copy the links that I'm going to insert because this is too much to write, of course. So right now you can see I have this Cloudflare Ajax font awesome kit, which is a CSS style sheet for icons. So we need to include that because it will make the project look a lot nicer. And those are all the links we have to include in the head. Then, so I don't forget, we're also going to go below the body and add some scripts. So we're just gonna type in script source. And the first one is going to be static slash scripts slash chat.js. Then we can just go ahead and copy that and paste it right above. And we're gonna add, or we're gonna change this to responses. And then once again, in my GitHub link, you're going to be able to copy this link right here, which will allow us to use jQuery in our scripts. And that should take care of linking everything you need to link together to make this project work. 
Now we can go ahead and get started with actually creating the HTML inside the body. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a comment which says chat bar block. And this is usually how I structure my own HTML to understand where things are. So the first thing we're gonna create is a div and this div is going to have a class of chat bar collapsible. And the first thing we have to create inside here is a button. And this button is going to have an ID of chat dash button. It's gonna be of type button. It's gonna have a class of collapsible. And we also have to insert the text, which is gonna be chat with us, exclamation mark, space. Then click on enter because we still have to add some more code, which is going to be an inline element. And this is just going to be an icon. So we're gonna type in I, and then this has to have the ID of chat icon. It's going to have a style, and it's going to have a color of hash FFF, which is just a white color. Then we also have to give it a class, and this is going to be using the font awesome CSS library. So we have to go FA, FA, FW, FA, comments, dash O, and this should take care of adding the icon of a send arrow to our chat bar. So now that we have created the button, we have to go down below. And inside here, we're gonna go ahead and create another div, which is going to have the class of content. And inside this div, we need to go ahead and create another div, which is going to have the class of the full chat block. To make this easier to read, I'm gonna just do that. Then inside here, I need to go ahead and add another note, which is going to be called message container, just so I can remember what this is. Then we'll go ahead and create a div with the class of outer container. And immediately inside another div with the class of chat container. And inside here, we're going to actually place the messages of the chat box. So let's create another comment where we can just type in messages. And inside here, we can get started by, of course, adding another div with the ID of chat box. And inside here, we will start with an H5 element, which is going to have the ID of chat timestamp. So every time the user starts a new chat, it's going to show the timestamp at the top or when it started. And that's going to be nothing initially, so you won't see anything until we start the program. Then we're going to create a paragraph, which is going to include the ID of bot starter message. And it's going to have the class of bot text. And I'll show you what this is later. But uh, in the meantime that nothing's happening, we're going to create a span and include the text of loading. And I usually use this for my online website because that will just show that it's trying to retrieve some information. And that should take care of this message part right here. Now we have to go ahead and create the input box. So we're just going to type in user input box. And the first thing we have to create here is a div, which is going to have a class of chat bar input block. Then we have to create another div with the ID of user input. And inside here, an input box, which is going to be of type text. It's going to have an ID of text input. It's going to have a class of input box. The name is going to be message. Then we also should include a placeholder, which is just going to say tap enter to send a message. And I actually prefer to have the ID and the class in front. So we're just gonna place it here instead. And right below it, we're going to insert an empty paragraph. Then right below that, we can go ahead and create a new div with the class of chat bar icons. And first we're gonna create this eye. And inside here we can just insert icons very similarly to the way we created this first one over here. So in fact, let's actually go ahead and copy that to save some time and just paste it inside here. So the only thing we have to change essentially is the color to crimson for this one. And we want to change that to a heart. And in addition to that, we want to insert an on-click method, which is just going to be called heart button. Then we can go ahead and copy and paste that immediately under. It's still gonna have the ID of chat icon. The color is going to change to a dark gray, hash 333. And here we just want to insert a send icon. And we need to change the onclick method to send button. And then under the user input box, we need to go ahead and create one more div. And it's going to have an ID of chat bar bottom. And we're just going to insert an empty paragraph 
tag inside there. Now we can go ahead and click on save and you'll notice we'll have this very ugly looking HTML of what our chatbot looks like when it's completely vanilla. So we have the heart, we have the send message, we also have the chat with us button and a place to insert some text which will later be popping up up here. The next thing we have to take care of is the CSS. So let's go ahead and go to our homepage. CSS and we're going to start by editing the global HTML. We're going to add a scroll behavior of smooth and a font family, which is going to be Helvetica sans serif, or I guess it's called Helvetica, not Helvetica and Arial. Then for the body, we're just going to go ahead and remove the margin and set it to zero and auto. And we're gonna give it a dark background color because we live in the age of dark mode. So hash 222. So that's all we have to do for the home CSS. And if you refresh the page, you should notice everything has become dark in the background and that the text has changed slightly. Then we can go to our chat CSS and finally take care of making this look really, really nice. So now we're going to move on to the chat.css and inside here we're going to add all of the style elements that will give our chat box its actual messenger style. And for this one we're just going to go ahead and copy and paste in all the styles that I've created. And of course you can get this on Gumroad if you just click on I want this it will download the package and you'll have the CSS as well. You do not have to insert any money just add zero if you do not want to pay for it. But after you've done that and inserted all of this I'm going to go ahead and explain what all of this is. So let's go ahead and click on save. As you can see, it immediately updates it to a nice chat box in the bottom right hand corner. And when you click on it, nothing happens yet because of course we have not added any functionality to this program. But let's go ahead and explain what all of this is. So to get started, we have the dot chat bar collapsible, which just places this element down in the bottom and gives it a fixed position, which means that when we scroll, it will always remain at the bottom no matter what happens. Then we also decided to position it slightly to the left by giving it a position of right 50 pixels, which places 50 pixels in between the right and the element and also a small box shadow to give it a nice contrast in case you have a white background. The collapsible tag is used for the button or when we click on this. So as you can see, it turns the cursor into a pointer and just make sure that we can click on it and make sure that the user understands it's a clickable element. Then we have the content, which is all of the elements inside this tab. And it has an initial height of zero, which means it just hides everything. But if we were to go ahead and remove this, you'll notice that we will have the full chatbot here ready to be used with all the buttons that when you go over, they get hovered and so on. But we're going to place that back because we need it to initially be set to zero so that when we click on it, it can grow and become smaller again. Then we have a full chat block which just takes care of showing all of the elements inside the chat block once we click on it. And essentially in JavaScript, we're going to click a button that changes this to this one over here and changes this one back to this one over here. So these two elements just take care of making sure that one gets converted to the other and one shows it and one decides to hide it. So of course, full chat block means we have the full chat block displayed. Next, we have the outer container, which defines how small the chat box height should be. So when we click on this, it's always going to have a minimum height of 500 pixels, even if there's only one message. Otherwise, if we did not have this, if there was a single message, the chatbot would be very, very small and it wouldn't look really good. And then we have the chat container that guarantees that it only stays at 500 pixels. Otherwise, it will continue to grow indefinitely. And we want a scrolling behavior rather than an infinite list that grows upwards. So this guarantees that the max height stays at 500 pixels and that the position is absolute. Then we use this pseudo element for the scroll bar to make sure that it remains hidden inside the chat box. And this works for most web browsers. And actually I'm gonna go up and, and comment out the dot content block because it's so much easier to explain what's happening here when that is commented out. Then we have a dot chat bar input block. And this is this part right down here that has a gray background and has a input box, a button and another button. This is just the outer container. As you can see, we have a background color here of RGB. And we can easily change that to hash Oh, oh, oh. And you'll notice that we'll have this down there. So that is exactly what the input block is. It also has a display of flex to make sure that all the items inside are evenly distributed. But well, let's change that back to the lighter gray. Then we have some chat bar icons, which is just a group of these icons. As you can see, we have another flex box, which spaces these items evenly. Then we also have another pseudo element, which is the hover, which means every time we go over one of these icons, it 
fades out to 0.7 opacity to make sure the user understands that they can use it as a button. Then we have this user input box, which is set to 75% because of course the rest is set to 25% and we want to have 100% of the width taken in total. And that just makes sure that this is always occupying about 75%, no matter how much we scroll, it should always look pretty good. Then we have the input box itself, which is where we can insert the text, of course, and it is rounded, but actually one thing I'm gonna do to make it more visible, we're gonna change this to a dark gray. As you can see inside, we have this input box, and inside the input box, we have some rounded corners. That's because I gave it a border radius of 10 pixels. The width should be set to 100 pixels. There's no border, it floats to the left, and there is no outline when we click on it. And if you text a lot, it's gonna to go to the right, which is great, and works just as we want it to. But of course, if you don't like the border radius, you can just change that to zero pixels, and it will do that. So that's what the input box element does. Now moving on to the important stuff, which is the user text and the user text span. So the user text is used to define the text that is inside when you send a message, such as the loading. And the user text span is just used to define the box on the outside. And right now we don't have any user text because we have not added the functionality to add user text. But if we go down to the bot text, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So for example, this loading message, as you can see, the text color is black. It has a font weight of normal and a font family of Helvetica. And the font size is set to 16 pixels with the text aligned to the left so that the text remains on the left over here when we add it to this block. While the user text, of course, is going to be added to the right and it's going to have a background color of blue. And then the bot text span is going to be the container of the message. So of course you can change that to whatever you want. It's going to be an inline block and you can make the background color even red if you prefer. But I think the light gray looks a lot better and it's a lot more messenger style. It also has an animation of float up. So every time we actually save, you'll notice that when there's a new message, it's going to float up slightly when it gets inserted. And this was a custom animation created using the keyframes keyword. As you can see, it starts from translate Y and ends at translate Y zero from opacity of zero to the opacity of one. So it's a custom animation. As you can see, as we save, it will always have that animation. And finally, we have the at media query tag, which allows us to specify what we want to happen when the screen size is smaller than 600 pixels, which in my case turns into a mobile phone. So what I wanted to happen is to change the full chat block to 100% width, so it occupies all of the screen. Then I wanted to change the chat bar collapsible to position fixed with a bottom of zero and a right of zero, so it's perfectly centered in the screen. Then I wanted to make sure that the collapsible was also 100% of the width. We just make sure that it occupies the complete width of the screen. But let's change everything back to what it was earlier when we copied and pasted it. And as you can see now, it's collapsed once again at the bottom. But that sums up everything we had to do in our CSS files. The next step is to move on to our JavaScript files and actually add the functionality to this chatbot so it can respond to us and so that when we click on this button, it actually expands and doesn't stay collapsed. But I'm going to leave that for the next video. So as always, guys, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, with that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.